Hey everyone, my name is Olaf, and today I will teach you how to make this audio visualizer in Blender 2.8 in Eevee. As always, it's going to be uh, quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by pressing X to delete the default cube. Then let's open a new window by dragging and select the video sequencer. And then we're going to add the music, so click add and then sound. And then you can download the music in the link below or you can use your own music. And then go back to Blender and select the MP3 file and then open it. And then we can play the uh, animation. Next to the file name, you can see how many frames the soundtrack is equal to. And in this case, that is 5089. So uh, let's set the end frame to 5089. Okay, so now the music is added and uh, we can add the visualizer. So let's uh, pause the animation and go to the first frame. And then let's uh, scale down the uh, top window. And then click add, mesh, and then let's add a uh, sphere. And then press S to scale. And then go to the modifiers, add a subdivision surface modifier, and increase the number of subdivisions, which increases the number of polygons and then apply the modifier. We can also add a smooth shader. We're going to uh, combine multiple displacement modifiers with a texture. So uh, use a texture with the Stucci type and then set the Stucci type to hard. And then set the size to 0.5. And then we're going to add this texture to displacement modifiers and then animate those displacement modifiers. So uh, go into the modifiers and then let's add three displacement modifiers. And once we have three displacement modifiers, we're going to add the same texture to all of them. So just select the texture, then go to the next one, select the texture, and then the last one and add the texture. And I decided to decrease the uh, mid-level values as they decrease the level of uh, displacement. So I set them to uh, 0, 0.2, and then 0 for the last one. And then we're going to animate the strength values of the displacement modifiers using different sound frequency intervals from the music. So uh, press I to keyframe. And then let's go into the uh, graph editor. And then make sure the uh, strength value is selected and then go to key. And then click bake sound to F curves and then select the MP3 file. And then define the uh, frequency interval, which uh, will be uh, from zero to 250 for the first uh, strength value and then bake to F curves. As you can see, when we move on the timeline, it's uh, animated. So now we need to animate the rest of the strength values as well. So go back to the uh, first frame and then press I to keyframe. You can also right click and insert keyframe. Okay, so let's select the second uh, strength value and then click key. And then once again, bake the sound to F curves and then select the MP3 file. And then we need to define a new frequency interval. And this one will be from 250 to 600. And then bake the sound to F curves. And as you can see, it's starting to look a little bit better. And then we're going to uh, keyframe the last string value. So I to keyframe. And then select the strength value in the graph editor and uh, bake the sound to F curves once again. And then select the MP3 file. And the last one will be from 600 
to uh, 10,000. OK. And then add sound to F curves. And now we have the full animation. OK, so before we continue, let's uh, minimize the displacement modifiers for the sake of uh, space. And then go to File, Save As, and let's uh, create a new save. You can save it wherever you want on the computer. And then press Enter to save. If we zoom into the object, we can see that uh, we need some additional polygons. So uh, let's add a subdivision surface modifier. And I think two additional subdivisions will be enough for the final animation. You can also try three, but I'm going to set it to one for the viewport and then two for the render, which is uh, what uh, matters the most. So I think that's enough. I recommend going into the extreme values in the soundtrack and uh, make sure that you have enough subdivisions. So uh, the next step of the tutorial is to add the background image. So uh, go to the world settings, and then environment uh, texture, and then open. And you can download the uh, background image in the link below. So uh, make sure to download the uh, factory catwalk. And then go back to Blender. And then after you unzipped the file, you can open the background image in Blender. So factory catwalk. And then open the HDR file. And once we go into uh, rendered view, you can see that we have the background image. And then we're going to add some additional light. So let's go back to solid view. And then select the light source. Go into the light settings change it into a sun and set the strength to 15 which is great for the bloom effect that we will add later and press G to grab and R to rotate and then we can go back into render view and as you can see we have the sun so let's select the audio visualizer go into the materials add a new material and then let's add a glossy material and then let's set the roughness to, uh, let's say, 0. 0.15. And then add a color. It doesn't really matter what color you add, so just uh, find a color that you like. So I'm going to add a uh, blue color. And then click Add, Mesh, and then let's add a plane. And then press G then set to grab the plane on the set axis and then press S to scale the plane. Okay. And then we need to add a material for the plane. So uh, click new. And then uh, let's use the uh, glossy shader. And then decrease the roughness. We can set the roughness to uh, let's say uh, 0.2 for example. And then I'm also going to make the uh, color a bit darker. So something like this, which I think looks great. And you can also hide the overlay to see what it looks like without the grid and the sun. Now let's add some walls as well to hide the uh, background image. So uh, press tab to go into edit mode, E to extrude and then X and delete the top face. And then let's create a new save. So save as, click on the plus sign, and then save as blend file. And then go back to object mode. And now we're going to set up the camera. So uh, press numpad zero to look through the camera. And then press N. And then go into view. And then lock the camera to view. Let's go a bit backwards, select the camera, and let's increase the range of the camera by increasing the end value. And then find a good position for the camera. And try to make sure that everything is within the frame of the camera throughout the whole animation. So just uh, test out uh, different frames. And also try to make sure that the object is in the middle of the uh, camera. 
Okay, so this looks fine. So let's go into the render settings. Okay, so let's start off by enabling bloom, which gives us the nice bloom effect that you saw in the final animation. And uh, here you can see the settings. We're going to change these uh, settings uh, later on. And then enable screen space reflections as well as refraction. And then also enable motion blur with the uh, default uh, settings. Okay, so let's select one of the frames and see what it looks like when it's rendered. So uh, let's just uh, select a frame with one of the extreme values and then go to uh, render and then set the display mode to uh, the image editor and then uh, click render image. And right now I think the bloom effect is a bit uh, too strong. So let's go back to the 3D view. And then let's open uh, Bloom. And I'm just going to decrease the radius. And I think that looks a bit better. Now we're going to render the final animation very soon. So uh, this is the time to make the final adjustments to the materials and the colors. So uh, let's select the floor as well. I'm going to decrease the roughness and make it a bit darker. This is of course optional. You don't have to add the same color or the same material. So just experiment. And then let's also increase the uh, number of samples, both for the render and the viewport, which uh, looks a bit better. Okay. And then let's go into the output settings and then set the frame rate to either 24 or 30. I recommend setting it to 24 if you're going to add the sound in a different software. But say if we're going to add it in Blender, just use uh, 30 because the sound is going to adapt to the frame rate. And then let's uh, create a folder for the file animation. So I'm just uh, going to create a folder, give the folder a name. And then select the folder. And then give the animation a name. And then let's create one last save. So we'll save as, click on the plus sign, and then save. Now, when it comes to the file format, you can use uh, PNGs. You can also use AVI JPEG and then add the sound in a different software. Or you can add the sound directly in Blender by using FFMPEG and then adding the mp3 under uh, audio. I personally prefer adding the uh, sound in a different software, but uh, that's up to you. So I'm just going to use PNGs, and then go to render, and then render animation. And uh, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will post more Blender 2.8 tutorials very soon. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and subscribe.